So, um, so it says, uh, suppose a particle called some, it's a some unstable particle that's created somehow. All of this, you don't really need it. <laughs> this is what's uh, important to hear. It tells you that how fast it's moving. So here it's telling you what speed at which it's moving. And it tells you that it lives this amount of time. And let me pause a little bit before uh, labeling it. So this is the picture that you have. Let's say this is K-on. It's moving by at some speed, beta C. And, um, and I have, I'm the observer here, just in my lab, looking at this K-on passing by and looking at uh, when it decays. And this is what the question says. It lives this amount of time when at rest relative to an observer. This phrase is a specific phrase that's meant to highlight um, particular kinds of quantity. In the lecture, we talk about a proper length and proper time. So, um, and those proper lengths and proper time, they are defined the reference frame where your ruler or the clock is at rest. So uh, with this phrase, what the question is telling you is that this is the proper time, tau, that, um, that this event is measuring. You have a K-on that's living right now and it's gonna decay in some later time. And that amount of length of time uh, how much it passes when in K-on, K-on's uh, rest frame is going to be this amount of time, uh, tau or what we call proper time. And what you measure um, in the lab as the K-on decays here, that's going to be the, or I'm drawing the length because I don't have access to time dimension to draw things there. So, um, so the amount of time I measure there is going to be the, just a regular lab time. So uh, when we went over the time dilation, um, you <laughs> went through the derivation and there's a factor gamma that comes in, gamma one over square root of one minus beta squared. Uh, this is a factor that's uh, between zero and uh, I guess infinity can increase without limit. And uh, this is the phrase I told you that'll help you remember which side of these expressions gamma is on. Um, with, the time, with regard to time dilation, the moving clocks are slow or slower. So wherever you put gamma, it has to be put in such a way that this uh, um, lab time is greater than the proper time. So that um, the events that occur in the rest frame but as you observe it from the frame that's uh, uh, moving relative to this k um, that the amount of time you measure will be longer. So um, the only way to build this expression so that um, this relationship holds is that the lab time is equal to gamma times the proper time tau. So, and if you look it up in the textbook, you'll see that, yes, that's the correct expression. So it looks like I need to calculate gamma and multiply that to the proper time to get the lab time. Let me do that. Um, so um, gamma, that's gonna be one divided by the thing underneath the square root, one minus 0 0.974 squared. Um, close this, so this is a thing under the square root. Let me take the square root. And when I hit equal, it's gonna give me one divided by that. So my gamma factor is, it's pretty large, 4.414. And um, I would ask you to be cautious as you plug in these numbers. Like if I had plugged in, I think 0 0.97, this would have been very different. So with the special relativity, um, especially as you reach the high speed limit, do, be careful about the precision of the numbers you plug in. I think you'll see more of that in the later weeks. So let me take this gamma factor and multiply to this uh, leading portion of the, um, the scientific notation because I have the same factor 10 to the minus eight. So I just need to calculate this portion. I keep forgetting the name of this portion and there's a name for it. Um, anyways, multiply to 1.238 then that's 5.465 times 10 to the minus eight. So 
that should be it. Um, and that's the I can scroll down. Uh, that, so th that's the the time dilation. It, it's fairly simple. I just want you the chance to mention that moving clocks are slow, <laughs> and that phrase helps you remember which side of this expression gamma should be on. Okay. Um, the next question I want you to go over is question five, and so this is quite um, similar to the previous question. Now, as you look at it carefully, I hope you will see that um, it's uh, a little bit different in that it's um, nothing in the question seems to be telling you how fast uh, anything is moving. Uh, but oddly enough, what it's telling you is um, it's telling you the proper time. This is how long the particle lives when at rest relative to an observer. So it's telling you the proper time, and it's telling you the, the time dilated time, the length of time measured in the lab frame. So, so what the question has done was it didn't give you any information for the velocity directly, but it has given you information for gamma directly. So the time dilation says that amount of time in the lab frame, is equal to gamma times the proper time. So solve that for gamma. Gamma is just the ratio of those two times. And I, let me get a numerical value. I think that'll be useful. So the numerical value for that is um, checking that they are the same, power of 10 to the uh, minus 16. So the gamma is gonna be 1.3 divided by 0 0.84. So 1.548. Let me just keep an additional precision for luck. Uh, 1.548. And what I want you to do here is um, show you that between specifying gamma and specifying velocity V um, or you know, uh, velocity beta, it, uh, they are all basically one single piece of information. Uh, you can see here that V and beta are basically related to one to one, and gamma and beta are related to one to one. Gamma is defined as one over square root of one minus beta squared. And here, what you have is uh, if you know gamma and you don't know beta, you have one unknown, one equation, you can solve for beta. So let me go through the step actually uh, slightly more carefully. <laughs> so I'm going to take a square of both sides. Doing that gets me to gamma squared is equal to one over one minus beta squared. Let me take the reciprocal. So one over gamma squared is equal to one minus beta squared. Let me put beta squared by itself. Uh, beta squared is equal to one minus one over gamma squared. And now I can simply solve for beta by plugging in uh, not plugging in, uh, taking the square root of both sides. So beta is equal to square root of one minus one over gamma squared. And the further we go into special relativity, the more circumstances you will see where we actually specify speed by specifying gamma rather than beta. And this question is the very first example of it. Um, what the question is asking for here is basically beta. And once you have worked hard enough to figure out gamma, then you can get beta by putting gamma through this expression here. So, so let me do that. Uh, I, I'm almost done here, so I might as well just to finish it up. So, um, so I need the thing that's under the square root. So that's gonna be one minus one divided by, and I need a gamma, 1.548. Oh, and I need to square it, so square it close the parenthesis, and then take the square root. Okay, so that's beta. Uh, I could hit equal, but the, actually I don't know what that would do. Anyways, um, 0 0.763 is beta. Yeah. So, <laughs> can scroll down again. And, um, 
this is what you are going to see um, in the upcoming weeks as we go into more ultra or very highly relativistic, ultra relativistic cases, you are going to start to see V approach C. Um, so beta will asymptotically approach one. It'll never equal one if your particle is, uh, has some mass. Um, so at that point, at those ultra relativistic regime is where you will begin to lose precision if you're specifying your speed in terms of beta because it's a matter of how many nines do you specify? Is it 0.99c or is it 0.999c or is it 0.99s and then c? Um, it, that's where that's the regime where we'll get to uh, specifying our speeds by specifying gamma instead. And you will see that in one of the later questions that we do today, that um, those are the regimes where gamma might be 10, 20, and um, you will see us start to struggle to specify basically enough for precision for beta so that we don't end up having to say that something is practically uh, moving at uh, exactly at the speed of light. I mean, it's practically moving at speed of light, but in special relativity, there's a difference between something actually moving at speed of light and slightly below speed of light. So, um, so I think that's all I wanted to demonstrate on this question.